Ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow AMD will be hosting their next Horizon event. This of course takes place during E3 where we're going to have numerous other announcements as well. In fact, uh, Microsoft themselves are teasing that they're going to have some type of announcement concerning Xbox Scarlet. But AMD are expected to reveal uh, further critical details of the RX 5700 series, aka Nave. And there's also rumours that we're going to learn more about Matisse and its overclocking capabilities, possibly some other bits and pieces as well. However, over the past couple of hours, there has been a huge leak that has popped up on the internet, specifically on the website videocards.com. And they have been sent slides which appear to be genuine, obviously they may not be, but they do appear to be genuine, of the RX 5700 XT and its critical specifications as well as what seems to be confirmation of the 16 core 32 thread Ryzen 3000 CPU. Uh, we're going to start things with Nave, then we're going to move over to the uh, Ryzen 3000 16 core. The GPU that we have in this slide is the 5700 XT. I'm going to get to the naming scheme in just a moment. We have 40 compute units, which provides up to 9.75 T-flops of performance. This is with an 8GB GDDR6 frame buffer. We don't know about memory speeds yet, but it's either going to be most likely 14 or 16 Gbps. I'll get to more about that in a moment uh, with some guesswork. We have a boost clock of 1905MHz, which is the uh, frequency that they're using to derive the 9.75 TFLOP figure, just for your FYI. A 1755MHz game clock, that's new. And finally, 1605 megahertz for the all-important bass frequency. Um, we all know how boost and bass work. I'm not going to guess yet at the moment about game frequency until we learn more from uh, AMD themselves. So, unfortunately, one thing we are missing is the pricing information. What we can probably learn, though, is that 40... Uh, compute units does seem to indicate that the shader information that we did learn about uh, previously that leak does appear to be ge uh, genuine where there were eight shader engines and each of those shader engines contains five compute units. So as I mentioned uh, we have the XT variant here which is probably the highest end SKU. AMD in the past have frequently used Pro and XT, the Pro variant being the lower end SKU and the XT variant being the higher end SKU. Obviously, because we don't know uh, the differences yet, this is just pure guesswork on my part, but I'm going to say that we're going to see the low 30, uh, number, low 30 compute units for the uh, Pro version, and I'm going to guess it's probably going to be a memory frequency difference as well. This is pure guesswork on my part, but possibly we might see 16 GPPS for the XT variant and with the Pro variant, AMD may decide to save a few bucks because in theory they won't need such high memory frequencies because the performance is going to be lower of the GPU anyway, so they may decide to outfit the boards with 14 GPPS. Then again, it may just be cheaper in the long run or make not much difference depending on their manufacturing process to just go with uh, 16 GPPS or it may also depend on the board partners as well. Some board partners may decide to outfit their particular GPUs with 16 GBPS memory, depending on how much freedom uh, AMD provides them. All of that is guesses, by the way. Um, oh, and speaking of the design, we can also tell that this is almost certainly a blower cooler. Uh, assuming it's not just a mock-up and the design they show on stage is significantly different. Um, so I don't necessarily have a problem with it. It looks cool. I know people are going to criticise it immediately and say, oh no, blower design, it's terrible. And I will grant you that Polaris, as well as other cards um, that AMP have used uh, blowers on, have not exactly been the best in terms of noise, heat, and, well, anything, actually. And you've been better off to buy a third-party uh, third party custom variant, such as what Sapphire have done, who have done amazing work with AMD cards. With that said, though, until we actually know what the heat is like on these cards, what they're doing with the, you know, the, the noise and all of that stuff, it doesn't. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna start ringing the alarm bells yet until we actually get the cards for testing. Um, and to be honest with you, what they do with the reference design doesn't necessarily uh, impact many of us because I imagine that a lot of people are just gonna go ahead and purchase 
the likes of a higher end cooler variant anyway. The only problem with it, of course, is it does affect uh, reviewers. So what does tend to happen is that um, if you have a, you know, the reference design which gets sent out to all the reviewers and all the reviewers say, well, this card operates hot and noisy and all of this stuff because they're using the reference blower and the reference blower is causing the card to be hot and noisy. That's the impression that people get. So I kind of wish AMD had not done that, but it, it is what it is. You can't take T-flops and uh, performance and then start using that to figure out how it competes against other architectures, including uh, even Vega, because obviously there are significant differences with RDNA compared to Vega or Polaris and so on and so on. What we do know is that the um, uh, that the uh, RDNA architecture does significantly more work per clock, which is great, uh, but of course we don't really know yet because we've not had uh, that many tests at all from AMD. All we've seen is like one game benchmark, which was Strange Brigade, to know how it does in different workloads versus Vega. So, for example, how well does it do in, say, pure geometry performance? How well does it do in compute-based tasks? How well does it do with traditional pixel pushing power? What about improvements to, for example, compression? And all of these other uh, changes, even things like tweaks to the schedule on the GPU are gonna make significant differences. I'm not saying that, uh, the 5700 XT is going to outperform the RTX 2080, and I'm not saying that it's going to outperform the uh, the um, the Vega 20 cards either. I'm just simply saying that you can't use T-flop to T-flop when there are different architectures. It's going to be really interesting, though, to do some in-depth testing on these cards. And now let's move over to the 3950X processor. This is a 16-core CPU, 32 threads. Now, this is, so we do know that this CPU does exist. It was even at uh, it was even at Computex. It had a base frequency of 4100 megahertz and a uh, boot and a overclock frequency of 4250 megahertz on all cores. And it was shown running Cinebench. Various members of the press actually saw this CPU, but AMD were just not showing it formally for whatever reason. Of course, it was no accident that the CPU was there. They were obviously using it to drum up hype because obviously if they didn't want anyone to know about the 16 core CPU, they would not even have it in the building, let alone actually set up test, you know, usable in a test system. But what this slide does is it shows the uh, various frequencies of the CPU and so on. So the processor is 16 cores, 32 threads and has 72 megabytes of total cache. The TDP is 105 watts, and the boost frequency is 4.7 gigahertz. The base frequency is 4.5 gigahertz. So the base frequency is actually the, the lowest out of all of the other CPUs. The 3900X, which is a 12 core part, has a base frequency of 3.8 gigahertz, so it's 300 megahertz slower. Uh, the 3800X has a base frequency of 3.9 gigahertz. Uh, the only CPU that's actually kind of close, well, two CPUs that are close to the 3700X as well as the 3600, which have a base frequency of 3.6 gigahertz. And obviously, those CPUs also have a lower TDP as well, with the 3700X, oh, sorry, with the 3600, excuse me, having, for example, a 65 watt TDP. We also do not know the pricing of this CPU yet. The 3900X is retailing with an MSRP of 500 US dollars. So I'm going to guess that this is going to be, you know, the 650 to 700 US dollar range, but that's just a pure guess. It could be 501 US dollars for all we know. So one thing that is getting people confused uh, quite frequently is the uh, base frequency, the turbo frequency, and finally the TDP. So the TDP uh, from what my understanding is for the Ryzen 3000 series CPUs is actually in relation to the base frequency. Uh, and obviously they're running all of the cores at much lower clock speeds here for the base frequency, hence the TDP is just 105 watts. It's going to be really interesting though to see what the, what the TDP goes to when you're overclocking this thing and you're really cranking it up and yeah, running all the cores at max. The 4.7 gigahertz is when there is just a couple of cores active of course. So 
I would like to see what the breakdown is like. What happens when you've got uh, all 16 cores running? Is it the 4.1 gigahertz that we've seen in that league screenshot, or is it different? What happens if you've got eight cores under load and so on and so on? Either way, this processor is going to kick butt. It's going to make me wonder then um, what AMD are going to do. Are they going to announce the CPU for launch with all of the other processors on July the 7th? Or are they going to say that this processor is coming later? I don't know. I'm just pulling out my butt. But let's just say August or, you know, what's going on here? So it's kind of curious that they're holding this back. Maybe it was like that last thing to get all of the, um, all of the hype, all of the buzz. Or maybe they just weren't ready to announce it yet. Maybe they were just like biding their time trying to figure out about yields and cost and what they were trying to do in terms of the marketing strategy. Either way, it's going to be fascinating to see what people actually put their money down on with the Ryzen 3000 series. Let's just for the sake of argument say that you have a B450 motherboard or a B350 motherboard and that you can uh, upgrade your BIOS to support Matisse. Uh, or rather the Ryzen 3000 series CPUs. Honestly speaking, it actually would make a lot of sense to go with like the 3600 or 3700 if all you're doing is gaming. But then AMD, at least if this slide is accurate and, you know, is legitimate, they are actually uh, pushing this CPU as the world's first 16-core gaming-focused processor. Clearly, one of the reasons behind this is that the boost frequency is so high, and obviously if you're only running games, in theory anyway, you would only have a couple of threads, two, three, four threads, really being hammered. There are some games which are the exception to the rule, but generally speaking, that's what happens with most titles. So it's going to be really interesting to see how this CPU fares in terms of the market. Then again, when you're asking someone to pay, which presumably is going to be over 600 US dollars, yes, there are people who would happily pay that, but I think for the value-focused uh, individual, Purchasing a 3600 or similar CPU is probably going to be the way a lot of folks choose to go. As for Nave, hopefully we see one of two things. One, AMD undercut NVIDIA and they release the 5700 series at a cheaper price point than a Turing refresh. Or the other way is that AMD's uh, RX 5700 series outperforms what Turing is capable of. Because otherwise it's not going to be a particularly good look, obviously, if Turing outperforms AMD's new cards. With all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'd also like to apologize for yesterday's video. It's kind of weird that it cut off like that. I'm not quite sure what went on, honestly. The export I checked and it was fine. And when I uploaded it to Video Manager, it was showing as the full length and then it went and then it's been displayed as like 10 minutes. I don't really know why it did that. I do know that YouTube has had a couple of issues over the past few days. Anyway, Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Normal stuff if you have, like, share, comment and subscribe. And uh, I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.